Well, hi there. It's just a calm Saturday with 58 college basketball games right before Thanksgiving. Let's have some fun. Hey, we did some work this morning. Ken, where's the algorithm? Ken, it's almost noon. Ken, what's going on? When are you dropping this thing? And I'm like, uh, you know what I'm doing? Actually, is I'm going one by one on ESPN. Thank you very much for recording this information. And I'm just going to just gonna throw out an F you to relevant information. I hate that there's relevant information that we have to get that I have to do manually. If there's anything I can't stand, it is reading and typing because computers are supposed to do that for you. But I did that today, and we'll solve that problem for tomorrow because I am the universal problem solver. But uh, we have relevant information, and now we get to look through it. I haven't even looked at this yet, so we all get to learn it together. So let's talk about how to create this slicer because um, I've been getting requests about people that ask, hey, Ken, can you teach me how to do this? Ken, we're, can, I want to learn. Like, and I love, um, I, I love proliferating information. I think learning how to organize information and have it digestible and accessible without any tedious processes in terms of like just trying to grab it and go like, if you think about the way we used to look for information, it'd be different books. You know, I, I grew up with an encyclopedia uh, in the house and, and you had to figure out which letter it was to grab it and read some information that somebody recorded months or years ago that some guy walked around and knocked on your door and tried to sell you an encyclopedia Britannica. Times have changed and, and sports betting's changed along, along with all the other ways to organize information. So... Um, what's great about stuff like this is I, I don't know anything about college basketball. I go to some games sometimes uh, for fun. I have no clue, but it's very easy to write formulas based on, um, based on statistics that exist today and historical stuff and to predict it to amazing uh, degree of accuracy sometimes. So all that being said, how do you learn how to do this? What do you do? Well, best analogy for that is... I mean, Einstein, right? It was like E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. It's a beautiful little equation that supposedly um, helps us understand the, the relationships between matter and energy in the universe. Speed of light squared, that's C squared in that equation. Does anyone have any idea what the speed of light squared feels like, sees like, tastes like, acts in? Does anyone have a clue? I don't, I don't have a clue. I'm no Einstein. But I am an Einstein when it comes to organizing data at Excel. So to try to explain everything that's going on is impossible because even I don't understand all the working elements, which is why stuff breaks and I don't know what's going on and what's, what it's doing. We're just dumping stuff in and trying to identify independent variables. Um, all we're using is points, for example, to determine the player's uh, B score. I'm not even caring about rebounds, assists, steals, all that stuff. Because points have been such a great determinant of winning that I just left it there because it was easy. Lazy programming right there. But it does work. Um, so anyway, so how do you just, just reverse engineer, go through every single column and try to understand what these formulas are doing. They're kind of basic. They're usually just pulling information from a different sheet and then trying to weight it, weighting it up here. And you can mess around with numbers here all you want. And it's going to change power scores. And I mean, if you want to have some real fun, is mess around with these all day after the games are done. And we'll connect the, the odds compiler to the cube so that it can be dynamic. And basically, you can just mess around and try to get the thing perfect with some type of distribution to see if it's even possible. There's a whole lot of fun you can have with this. So it's just it's all the time you want to spend on it. All that being said, you listen to all that before we talk about the games. Well, let's talk about what I just said. I said I added something. So this is a big pivot table, and we're going to go to the field list in the pivot table by right-clicking it. And then over here, there's a thing called neutral site game. And neutral site game is a new thing that I spent all that time doing today and wasting your time while you could be betting on games watching this video right now. So um, what it does is it shows you all the games um, that are not at the traditional home site and are at some other site. And you can mess around with these slicers. You can make them do different things. Um, you can show different uh, columns of them. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So what I noticed is um, there's there's a bunch of these events going on. That's kind of cool. And what's really cool actually is that a couple of them, the Eastern Kentucky and the uh, High Point, have actual teams that are one of those schools in the game. So even though, for example, right here, Howard is playing – uh, at high point, that's actually accurate because the game's actually at high point. That's funny. Eastern Kentucky, it says they're home, um, and they are. 
<laughs> they are home. So they're actually playing at home uh, in this tournament. So that's I feel like that's an edge for those teams, right? See, they're 575, and, and, and High Point's favored as well on the other side of this. So that, that's kind of interesting. Now, here's the problem that I had because I ran out of time today, and I'll, I'll work on it for tomorrow maybe, which is I, I couldn't disconnect this from the bump right now because it's too complicated because the bump is dependent on home and away. It's really annoying. So so basically, if you're going to be applying a bump to the games, I would suggest, you know, you throw a bump on this and refresh. I would suggest not showing any of the neutral site games and then looking at them separately. So you would just look at the blank games, which are all normal games. That's the way I would look at this. Or we can, you know, I'm kind of, I mean, the home bump matters in terms of picking a winner. But I almost don't like it when when we're browsing the list because I like a raw comparison before I apply the home bump in my head, and and we'll see if that's that's a um, if that's a advantageous strategy. At least it is for my brain and understanding what's going on. So let's go over the games because we are gangster and we move lines. That's what we do. Um, let's go over the games. So at zero percent bump and. I'm going to look at at all the neutral site games first because we can get them out of the way, and I think they present some interesting things. So let's remove blanks by holding down control, and you've got all neutral site games now. The neutral site games mean that home and away essentially does not matter. Okay, so let's just move, remove it, right? Or just hide it. So in these games, we're descending by margin, and home and away doesn't matter, so, so let's not think about it. And we have we're looking for good lines at high margins is what you're trying to do. Bam, there's one. It's Brown and Bradley with an injured Bradley. That's interesting. Like that, like that a lot. That looks awesome. Brown plus three and a half at a 39% margin. Love it, right? I can't see anything wrong with that pick unless the, the injury on Brown is significant. Um, t uh, so that's a great one. Then we have Texas Rio Grande at Northern Arizona plus three and a half, 22% margin. Um, I mean, good, looks good. Holy Cross at Air Force, same deal. So if you're doing round robins, what I'm going to do, if, if these games haven't started yet, is is take them plus the points on the round robin. Oops, yeah, Brown, Texas, Rio. Because if you add them with the points, you give yourself an extra, extra hook, and you really don't want to miss picks on round robins because they punish you so exponentially. So, so you do that. But, you know, you can also do some fun stuff on money lines because – you know, you get a better line there. Um, what else is there? So there's a minus 105 for Dixie State at Cal State Northridge with really low scoring points, but this is a weak team. Always look at the power. That's how strong the raw team is. Um, so that means like if they have a margin of 12% and they're a 4% team, that means Cal State Northridge is 4 minus 12 or negative 8, right? Negative 8%-ish. Um, and teams can be negative when they just give up a lot of points and have bad defense. Uh, all right, so um, Western Carolina again, really low margin. So these are super low margins, and this game's in high point. Sorry, remember? This, game, this game's in high point, and this game's in Eastern Kentucky. So those are the two that I think I identified, right? I don't think any of the other ones. No, wait a minute, the CSUN. CSUN is at Cal State Northridge too. That's right, forgot about that. So Cal State Northridge is actually home here. So that's another sneaky one. Because that line's going to be about um, that line's going to be about even almost, right? So that's awesome. So I'd say Cal State Northridge is a play. The high point down there is a play. Whoops, because they're actually home, right here. Oh God, we lost. What do we do? Let's go back to this. The um, high point I like. High point to win because they're at home. I, I wouldn't even take them plus the four to five. But never listen to me. Always listen to the algorithm. Uh, it's a low margin game. I think we went through that, right? Holy Cross plus the points. Texas Rio Grande plus the points. Eastern Kentucky is probably so going to win, but the line's terrible. And then Brown plus the points, right? That looked good. And it's Cal State Northridge, which is about even. So they're on the other side of that, but they're home. All right, that's the neutral site games. Let's go to the other games, which is going to be a bigger slate, I believe. Well, here we've got – let's see what we've got. We've got um, – Looking for good line. What the hell? What? What? <laughs> yeah, you see that. I see that. You see that? Plus 850. When is that game? 
time is that game? That's funny. What? Bryant? Uh, we're going to not be able to find it. Uh, um, uh, okay, you can double click and get the answer to that. Hold on. Games at... Where's the game time? Game time. Underdog game ID. Where's the game time? Oh, it's the date. Sorry, it's the date. It's the date column. It's spread out. It, but there's a time here, isn't there? Oh, God damn it. Um, <laughs> you can see how difficult things are. Uh, I don't know what time this game is. I, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right, so so 8.50. Holy crap. I don't understand what's going on here, but taken. Oh, because it's backwards. That's why. Damn. Ah, so they screw that up sometimes. This is not right because this is right. So we actually need to fix, see how difficult things are? Oh, sorry, the game's right here. Shut up, Kenny. Um, this game is not, this game is minus 850 probably. There we go. See how we find errors? Um, okay, so VMI plus Marist, plus one and a half against Marist. It's a really good margin. Three and three games, that's a great pick, right? All right, VMI, Morgan State. Oh, sorry, what's home and away? Whoops. That's why we're looking at things differently. So home and away is what we're going to look at. And we're going to do the same thing we always do. All right, so VMI is away, which makes sense. So that, that's why they get a reasonable line. All right, but it's still a really high pick up there. Morgan State is away at Portland. Pretty high pick. You're not at 40% margin, but you're over 38 plus two and a half. A good job on a round robin there. What else we got? Any other reasonable lines? Stay away from this because they're away. Um, Delaware State home plus 385. So how about that against UNC Wilmington? No, no, it's wrong. See that? No, it's right. It is right. Plus 10 and a half. Wow. Wow, all right. Um, straight bet fun on Delaware State at that line and plus 10 and a half on round robin. Ar Army away. So now you're starting to get scared with away teams because we're only about 30% margin. This is about the last one I would cut off. Well, Sal's not bad. I'd actually say stay away. You're, when you're on a round robin, we now all of a sudden we're getting into away teams that aren't, you know, away teams, there could be a margin of 30 or 40%. So, so here I stop and I say, all right, now you're really risking it. Now we need to just look at home teams. So we're going to go and see what home teams we have because really we should have been looking at home teams from the beginning. New Mexico, 13% margin. Okay, that, that looks okay on a round robin to win. Alabama State, North Carolina Central, getting close, but they're home. So that's okay, minus 120. Home underdogs. That Delaware State is screaming, screaming. Hampton, plus 400, 5.9% margin and a good team. Georgia teams will lose games on you. That is okay. So here you got a very interesting, I'm going to throw a little on a parlay to win on these two because that's just crazy because they say they're both home teams and it's almost worth a shot. Definitely on a round robin plus the points. Now we're getting in, but this is a good line too for Radford at home against Navy. Twenty. This is doable, but they are plotted goal picks, right? Wow, how about a three-team round robin with that? That's a fun bet right there. Hope those games haven't started yet. I should end the video so I can get this up. Um. Well, anyway, this is what we got. Go through the file. Contact me if you want it. Um, we're just going to crush it. You can tell. All right. Watch out for the neutral site games. And good luck, everybody. May all your picks be winning.